Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, this is Nishat Colleen. I'm a project manager at the City of Detroit's Office of Sustainability, and you are watching our uh, webinar series. So I'm so glad that you joined us. Uh, we have some great information coming up. Um, but before we get started, I'm going to go ahead and introduce you a little bit to our office. Uh, we are the city's first office of sustainability. Uh, we were established in 2017, and it's our mission to facilitate healthy, green, vibrant, accessible neighborhoods where all Detroiters can benefit uh, and contribute. And we will do that through uh, collaborating between city departments and agencies, engaging um, and partnering among the city, citizens, and relevant organizations, um, including the, uh, our important partners who are a part of this webinar, and uh, improving process and policy that's internal to the city. Last year, we released the Sustainability Action Agenda um, which is the first sustainability plan for the city. And uh, we're really excited. We're coming up on a one year anniversary of, of that agenda. So uh, stay tuned for a, a good update from us in a little bit. The way we define sustainability is on this three legged stool uh, that you may have heard about before. Um, you may have heard people, planet and profit. We use the terms economy, equity and environment. Um, and sustainability is where uh, the three of those things converge and where uh, all three of them are being serviced and benefit. And what that means is meeting the needs of our current generation without sacrificing the needs of future generations. As I mentioned, our sustainability action agenda um, came out last year. You can find it and a good summary of the agenda as well on our office's website, which is DetroitMI.gov slash sustainability. And over on uh, the right hand uh, part of this slide, you can see our four outcomes um, organized in concentric circles. Um, those are healthy, thriving people. People are at the center of our action agenda. Um, affordable quality homes, clean, connected neighborhoods, and equitable green cities. Those uh, four outcomes are organized into 10 goals. Um, and some of the goals that we'll be focusing on today in uh, our workshop is uh, the ones under uh, affordable quality homes. So uh, saving where we can, making sure we're living in uh, homes that uh, help us live healthy lives um, and that are also affordable to be in. So uh, some quick um, housekeeping. Uh, we'll be keeping questions till the end. Uh, if you do have questions, you can shoot them over to our office if we don't get a chance to get to yours today. Our email address is sustainability at DetroitMI.gov. So with that, I will go ahead and turn it over. I'd like to introduce Cindy Ross, uh, the Restoration Manager at Friends of the Rouge. Cindy, whenever you're ready, go ahead and take it away. Great, great. Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks so much for having me today. Um, I'm here to talk to you about uh, disconnecting the downspouts on your home. Uh, and this helps us protect our local waters here in Detroit, uh, we have the Rouge, uh, the Detroit River, and we're impacting Lake Erie. So, well, I guess I should introduce Friends of the Rouge very quickly. Uh, we are a nonprofit that started in 1986. Uh, we are dedicated to the restoration and stewardship of the Rouge River. Um, and we do that through education and collaboration and um, partnerships. And so we're really excited to be uh, working with Sierra Club here in the city of Detroit for the past, um, oh, since 2011. So just about 10 years, we've been working on the Rain Gardens to Rescue program that Quinton just talked about. And more recently, we have been a partner in the Land and Waterworks Coalition led by Detroit Future City. Um, and to date, uh, together, we have installed nearly 100 rain gardens across the city of Detroit. And to do that, you need to disconnect downspouts and direct them into that rain garden. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. Whether you have a rain garden or not, um, it's really important to disconnect those downspouts. Just briefly, so in Detroit, we have that one system that carries the wastewater from our homes as well as the stormwater from our streets and parking lots. And, um, that water mixes together, and if we get a heavy rainfall, uh, it reaches capacity. And in order to prevent basement backups, um, the water is discharged directly into the Rouge or Detroit River untreated. And so we want to try to minimize that from happening to protect those local waterways um, from that pollution. And all of the other pollution that stormwater carries with it, like road salt and motor oil um, 
um, lawn care fertilizer. So just being very mindful of what we use on the land really does have, have an impact on water quality in our, in our rivers. So it's really important to think about what you have um, when you're disconnecting your downspouts. How many downspouts do you have in connected to the combined sewer system? Can all the downspouts be disconnected? So there is the state mandate that your, the downspouts on your home should be dis disconnected from the sewer system. There is an exception for uh, those areas that might, if they were disconnected, um, the only place you could direct that water to flow would be on an impervious area, such as a driveway. Uh, we don't want to do that. We don't want to create maybe a, a hazard in the winter with ice. Uh, so those downspouts would not need to be disconnected. But uh, whether or not you have a basement makes a difference in terms of the length of, of extension that you're going to add to get that water farther away from the house if you have a basement. Um, so really thinking about where that water is going to go uh, as you disconnect those downspouts and extend that, uh, the water must stay on the property of the structure. So you don't want um, any chance of flooding out your neighbors or, or putting water too close to your neighbor's home. If you have areas that might flood or remain wet after long periods of time, uh, you don't want to add more water to that. Um, so you want to think about uh, extending farther out if need be, or creating a rain garden to store some of that water um, temporarily. Uh, you should have permission, if you're not the landowner, um, from the landowner to do this work. And um, it's really easy work to do and pretty low cost. Uh, some things to think about are what are the color and type of the existing downspouts that you have on your home. Um, you will need a basic uh, or enhanced toolkit, um, really a basic, just a few things, really, if you're doing your own and not going to do any more than that. Um, so you will need um, some extension pieces. So once you cut your gutter, you're going to need an elbow and a front elbow or a side elbow. They call that an A or a B. Um, those are pictured and then I show it to you again in a video. Um, there are also flex pipes that you can use. Um, you may wish to add a backsplash block. It's not necessary, but um, it provides a space for that um, force of the water to hit that cement and flow out rather than kind of creating a little gully in your yard. Potentially. Um, sometimes you might need a band to attach that um, piece that you attach uh, along the side of your home or your porch uh, before it as you're extending it further out. And then the pipe that you're taking that um, downspout out of needs to be capped. And so you might uh, purchase a cap. There are several types of caps that you can purchase, or you can uh, use some chicken wire and newspaper and some quick reap to, to seal that off. Um, and then uh, if you're extending water farther from your home, we also use, I showed a, a picture of this corrugated tubing. Um, it's four inch tubing that um, allows you to extend uh, much farther away from the home. And you can put that, dig a trench and put that underground so that you're um, not having to mow around that kind of hides it. And then you'd use a pop-up emitter at the end so that the water is spread out over your lawn. Here's the tools that you need. So really the most important tools um, is the hacksaw or uh, a power saw if you have one, um, uh, a cordless drill or screwdriver, and then some self-tapping screws. Uh, those would be the most important pieces. Some things that might make your job a little bit easier would be some tin snips and or scissors. Um, if you have any like snags or some rough pieces that you need to um, move around. And then even some uh, long nose pliers can be very helpful. And then of course a measuring tape so you know what you're working with. Um, if you plan to do lots of downspouts, um, I do recommend a cordless drill. Um, and you may want to use uh, a ladder in case, uh, you may need a ladder just in case you need to adjust or fix uh, the downspout at the top of your roof line. Um, some sometimes if they're loose, you want to reinforce that, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> uh, by uh, adding some new screws just to tighten that back up.
just a quick how-to. Um, so you're going to cut that downspout nine inches above the sewer pipe with your hacksaw or sawzall or, or other power saw that you may have. Um, then you're going to add an elbow piece and secure that with a half inch or three quarters inch, really half inch self tapping screw. Um, then you're going to add that gutter extension or your flex pipe to direct that water away from your foundation. If you have a basement, um, you want to move that water at least six feet away from the foundation of your home. Um, if you have a slab or a crawl space, um, two or more feet is really recommended, and DWC recommends five feet. Um, and then, of course, plugging, plugging or capping that sewer pipe. So now I have um, a couple of examples if you want to advance that. So these are a couple of good examples. So the photo on your left, um, you can't really see where it's connected to the house, but you can see that that is extended farther away from the foundation of the home. That's a great example of a downspout disconnect and an extension out in the yard. So that water is watering the lawn, um, it's free water, it's not going into the sewer pipe, it's, it's going across the lawn and, and doing what it should. Uh, the photo on the right is just a great example. So the downspout was disconnected, um, they used a side elbow to direct the water out toward the front yard. And then of course they used a couple of bands to secure that to the, to the siding so that it's not gonna move over time or come loose. Uh, the photo on the left, you see uh, they've extended it toward the front of the home. However, the water's flowing over the sidewalk um, and right against the foundation of their porch. So this would not be an ideal situation. It would have been much better to cut um, the downspout um, where the siding ends and then uh, putting in an elbow to take that toward the front and run that downspout pipe along the porch on an angle all the way out beyond the end of the porch into the lawn. That would have been a much better um, uh, job and done a better job at getting the water away from the house. Uh, the photo on the right actually shows a downspout extension that I've seen at a location where they took the water um, they disconnected and extended it, but they put it right into a drain that goes to the combined sewer system. So there's no benefit to that being um, being disconnected. It's still really connected to the sewer system. So you don't want to do that. Um, and next I have a, a quick little video to really give a step-by-step -step hands on um, demo on how to do your downspout. So this is my mock uh, downspout. This is the siding of my home, not very attractive siding. Um, and here we have the cap. Let's pretend or imagine that this is ground level. So this downspout is coming off of the roof of my home um, and into uh, a pipe at the ground level or close to the ground level. The most essential tools uh, are hacksaw. This is what we use to cut the downspout pipe with. If you already have a power saw, um, I have this little sawzall. It makes for a bit of a easier uh, job, especially if you're doing multiple downspouts. So uh, this is also something you can use. Uh, when you're cutting, obviously, if this is your home, your brick siding or your, your the siding of your home, you don't want to cut into that at all. So we're going to be really careful when we make our pots not to do any damage to the house. Think about where the water is going to go when once you've down, disconnected the downspout. Um, you want to make sure that the water is going far enough away from the foundation of your home. So if you have a basement, you want to make that water go at least 10 feet from the foundation of your home. And if you don't, um, you can go a little smaller. DWSD recommends a five foot uh, distance from the foundation of your home. Um, you can use just another piece of downspout. Uh, you can cut that to the length that you need, uh, attach an elbow, attach this to the elbow, and extend that out into uh, your yard. Um, so if this is the side of my home, and let's just say my yard 
goes this way. So that's my front yard. This is the side of my home. Maybe the front of my home is over here. Uh, and this where I'm standing is in my neighbor's yard. Well, we don't want that water to flow in the neighbor's yard. So uh, there are the two different elbows that you would use to direct that, that pipe. So we have A and B. Uh, B is a side that would take the water that way. Um, a is the front that would direct the water to go in front. So just depending on either, uh, neither is right or wrong, it just depends on where you want the water to go. Both work the same way. Easier yet is maybe a plastic flex pipe. Now this is the same thing as these elbows, it does the same job, but um, it sort of has this accordion so you can shape it however you need. So if you have an odd spot or you need to shape it, um, twist it a little bit to make it fit uh, the area that you have to work within. Downs spots come in two sizes. Uh, this is more of a standard size that you will see on most residential properties. Commercial properties will have a larger, um, a larger downspout. So some of these larger flex pipes are actually pretty handy because they have both sizes. Um, so this is the standard residential size and here we have the more commercial um, wider size all in one unit. So you can, you can then just pop that in and direct it to go. This doesn't give you quite that um, five foot distance that you're looking for or more if you have a basement, uh, but they do sell these in longer lengths always put um, the piece you're adding over the piece that you're attaching to so that there's nothing to impede the flow of water. Now, uh, once you have cut your downspout, you wanna cap or fill the existing pipe. They make a cap that actually fits over some of these pipes and you can use just like a silicone glue to attach it. Uh, they make a wing nut cap that is just a flat circle with a, a wing nut on it and some uh, rubber. And as you ex it, it, it expands as you tighten that wing nut and it will fill uh, the space within. So it fits inside of the pipe. If you're doing multiple downspouts, it's even cheaper it would be to uh, take some chicken wire and a wad of paper, new paper or something, and put that over the pipe and then cement it, mix up some quickery and cement it closed. That's a, a good permanent solution. You want to measure about nine inches above where your pipe goes into the pipe. Your downspout goes into the pipe. So here we have nine inches. And then you want to go ahead and use your hacksaw to make that cut. Before I do that, I should probably recommend the use of safety glasses. Now I have glasses on, so I'm not going to put the safety glasses on. It's, it's wise to start slow. Um, these are really easy to use, but uh, if you haven't used one before, uh, the trick is once you get through the material, it, you kind of have to put a little pressure on some of it to, to allow your, your um, blade to go through a little bit easier. And so I wanted to direct that water so that it stays on my property. So I'm going to use this side elbow, or they call it the B elbow. And um, so this is the wider piece. This is the narrower piece. Put the wider piece over, just like that, nice and tight. And then you're going to use some uh, self tapping screws, half inch tapping screws. You probably want to put uh, one on each end, side. Um, sometimes you have a situation where there's another wall or it can be difficult to get in. Um, go ahead and put one in the front then. Um, And then your next step would be to add your connector, whatever that may be. And 
and it's as simple as that. Now, this would need to be a little bit longer so that you're taking the water farther away from your home, um, or uh, you could use this and then add a splash block so that it further takes the water away from your home, or even then attach a flex pipe. So that's all there is to it. It's really a simple thing. It's really low cost. The materials that you need are very low cost. Okay, so um, that is uh, just a very quick, very raw uh, video on how to uh, extend those downspouts. Thanks so much. Thank you, Cindy. Uh, again, that was Cindy Ross, the Restoration Manager at Friends of the Rouge. If you have any questions or want to learn more about what they do, uh, you can go to Friends of the Rouge's website, which is therouge.org. And while you're there, you can also see um, more information about Land and Waterworks as well. Thank you for watching our webinar series. Uh, again, this is Nishat with the Office of Sustainability with the City of Detroit. So glad that you were able to join us today. If you have any questions about the webinar or the presentation, or you have ideas for other topics you want uh, us to cover, feel free to email us. Our email address is sustainability at detroitmi.gov.